All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at equations of lines, how to graph them, and the key pieces of information that we can get from them. So in this first one, we have y equals 2x plus 3. We need to recognize that this is in slope-intercept form, so y equals mx plus b. And by lining everything up properly, we can identify that m, my slope, is going to be 2. Now understand that your slope is just going to be the coefficient of x when it's in this form. And a lot of times we like to think about slope as a fraction, as a ratio of rise to run. So even though 2 is simplified, a lot of times we like to say 2 over 1. That way we can clearly see how things match up with rise to run. And then we have this constant here at the end, that b value, and we talked about in the last video how that corresponds to the key point being our y-intercept. And it's going to be the ordered pair, 0, 3. So if I ask you for the y-intercept and you just say 3, you will be wrong. Because the y-intercept is a point, which means it must be given as an ordered pair. It needs both the x and the y coordinates. When we graph, though, we have to understand which piece of this we use first. The y-intercept is an ordered pair. It's a point. It's something that we definitely know for sure is on the graph. The slope tells us our movement, tells us our direction, tells us how to go. But we don't know how to move until we have a starting point, and that's that y-intercept. Keep in mind that every y-intercept goes on the y-axis, and if you forget which is which, make sure that you get in the habit of labeling your axes. So this is x, and this is y. Okay. So the y-intercept is on the y-axis, it's at 0, positive 3, so right here. And then I'm going to use my slope. Using my slope and counting correctly, I'm going to get more points. So I'm going to do a rise of 2, which means I go up 1, 2, and a run of 1, so over 1. So with a rise of 2, that's how you go up or down, so it's a rise of positive 2. So we go up 2 and over 1. If we do that again, up 2 and over 1, we get another point and another point. If we keep going in that same pattern, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. We can get more points by reversing that. And instead of going up and to the right, we can go down and to the left. So look, you go down 2, left 1, down 2, left 1, and so on. So you keep that pattern going, down 2, left 1, down 2, left 1, and so on. And you get points going all the way to the edge of the graphing window. And so now, we just take our straight edge, and we draw a nice line that connects everything together. So let's make sure we understand why we have the line to begin with. All the points that are marked out were going to be solutions to this equation. But they weren't the only solutions. There are an infinite number of solutions for this equation. And so the line Let's make sure we understand what this means. So this line represents it represents all solutions to the equation. So that means that any ordered pair, any point on this line, is supposed to be a solution to that equation. Now another thing to notice here is we're talking about slope, and the slope tells us how we move from left to right. And since this slope is positive, that means as we go from left to right, we're going to be going up. If our slope is negative, then we're going to be going down from left to right. All right, so let's take a look at this next example that we have. y is equal to negative 3 fifths x minus 2. Again, this is in slope-intercept form. So we can easily pick off the slope because it's the coefficient of our x term. Now you can only do this if it says y equals. So my slope is negative, 3 over 5. And again for slope, we like to see this as rise over run. And then the constant that we have here at the end corresponds to our y-intercept, which would give us the ordered pair 0, negative 2. As we mentioned, the y-intercept is a point, and points must be given as ordered pairs. When we graph, we always start with the y-intercept. So my y-intercept is 0, negative 2, like that. 
and my slope is negative three over five, which means as I go from point to point, I'm gonna be going with this ratio. Now, since this is negative, that means I'm gonna be going down from left to right. So one little point to make here is that we have the fraction negative three over five. And we can look at it in one of two ways. We can look at this as negative three over five, or we can look at this as three over negative five. Uh, the emphasis here is that we only have one negative sign. It can be in the numerator or denominator. You can't put it in both the numerator and denominator because then you, then you would have a negative divided by a negative, which is a positive. But clearly we have a negative slope. So from here, I'm gonna go down three units and over five. Make sure that you do count correctly. This is not one. That's one, two, three, and over one, two, three, four, five. Do that again, one, two, three, and over one, two, three, four, five should be about right there. Get more points so that we, we can get stuff on the left side of the graph. So instead of going down three into the right five, go up three into the left five. Up one, two, three into the left, one, two, three, four, Fine, like that. And as long as we were counting correctly and we're spacing these guys out the right way, we should be able to put our straight edge up there and it's going to go through all of these points without a problem. Now, one of the things you need to know about me when it comes to graphing is that you're to graph from edge to edge of the graphing window. You don't just put a couple points and then draw like a little line segment connecting those. You go from edge to edge of the window that I've given you to graph. Put as many points on here as will fit according to the slope. Draw the line and everything's gonna be just fine. Now, any ordered pair that we have on here is going to satisfy this original equation. Uh, not only that, but we can pick any two points on here and it's going to simplify to give us that same slope. Uh, for example, if I go from here to here, I want you to notice what's gonna happen. If I were to do this, I'd be going down and over. So let's see if we can calculate that slope. We know that our slope is rise over run. As I go from here to here, that's a rise of negative six. You've dropped six units. And as you go from here over, you have a gain of 10. And so if I take that fraction and I simplify it, I get negative three over five which is the same slope that I have right here. And that's what we're gonna notice about slopes of lines. Whatever the slope is, no matter what two points you pick, it's always gonna reduce back to that same slope. I take a look at the last example that we had. When I look at this, no matter what two points I pick, the slope is going to reduce to be two over one. Uh, let's take, let's take this guy and this one. Let's see what happens. I'm actually gonna go backwards here, just so I don't get in the way of my writing. Let's see what this says. So my slope, again, is that ratio of rise to run. From up five to down five, I've lost 10. So I went down 10, and I went to the left, one, two, three, four, five. So that's negative five. And if I take negative 10 divided by negative five, you get positive two, which is this slope. So for this line, no matter what two points you pick, when you try to calculate the slope, you're, you're going to get positive two. Just like down here, no matter what two points you pick, when you simplify and reduce that slope, you're gonna get negative three over five.